Hey YouTube. Well, we got a pretty windy day today and I also got a new tripod, so I'm gonna play around with it a little bit. Uh, we've been getting some pretty decent winds today. Uh, and I also have been doing a little experiment here with a DC to DC inverter. Um, some of you may recognize these uh, they're used on golf carts, mainly electric golf carts. These for converting a 36 or 48 volt system to use the entire battery pack down to 12 volts at a specific rating. Um, for example, this one here that I have hooked up, this is a 24 to 60 volt DC inverter or they call them voltage reducers. <clears throat> uh, this one will actually drop down to 12 volts, 10 amps. I've been trying to find something that's inexpensive that can take a specific voltage and drop it down to around 12, you know, 12 to 14 volts without much fuss and without a high price tag attached to it. And I haven't been able to find anything that can handle, <clears throat> you know, the output of at least you know, three or four amps. Um, then again, I really didn't look all that hard. Uh, so what I have done is I had this in one of my old electric golf carts. The uh, I sold the battery pack to a customer and I took this out because the golf cart, the, the chassis was actually rotted out from the battery acid. Battery acid destroys golf cart frames. Today our winds are between 0 and 20 miles an hour. They've been extremely variable today, but they've been pretty consistent in the past hour. They've actually died off a little bit compared to earlier I was out here. And uh, right now, I'd say they're probably around 10. But uh, I was out here and I started hearing this big relay I got. Now this is hooked up, this inverter. I got this relay from Thermodyne. I couldn't find them anywhere else and I've been hearing a lot of nice things about Thermodyne so I figured out yeah, why not. So I ordered it from Bob and it, it actually got here really quick and the price was right. There was other relays that were similar to it but they weren't the double pull double throw normally open normally closed uh, contacts like this one has. Now this relay does draw about an amp more or less. Uh, I know they're not really really consistent but this one's about an amp at 12 volts and I tried a little Zener circuit uh, forward biasing or reverse biasing however it's said but it, it I kept burning out the Zener diodes so that's another reason why I went with this little inverter and this seems to be working really really well because it comes on at 24 volts all right and it'll stay on until the voltage drops down below 18 volts which is what I wanted. I wanted to keep that 22 to 60 volt inverter on as long as possible. And when the wind dies off and it drops below 18 volts, it usually drops down to around 10 volts if the wind slows down enough. And it allows the solenoid to shut off and it turns on the 30 to 60, or the 10 to 30 volt inverter. Oh, that was zoomed in. I wonder why that looked like shit. Uh, so here we go. We got the 500 watt 10.8 to 30 volt inverter and the 1000 watt 22 to 60 volt inverter. And here you go, you can see I have it coming out. All right, let me move this tripod around a little just to kind of get you in here. Oh, this tripod is great. This makes it so much easier to do this. Okay, let me lower it down a little bit. Okay. Now, what you're looking at here, this is the line out. Ignore this battery clamp or that jumper cable that's going down to a small 12 volt battery I was charging. Just ignore it. Um, so you have the line coming out out of the box. Positive goes into one side of the relay. And on that same post, it goes into the 10 to 30, the 22 to 60 volt inverter. Okay. Now, when that inverter, when this power, this voltage reducer kicks on, it turns on this solenoid which in turn disconnects the 10 
10.8 to 30 volt inverter. I don't know if you could see it, but the 10.8 to 30 volt inverter is hooked up on this side of the relay. This is the normally closed side of this relay, which means when the relay is off, that circuit is connected. Ooh, we have a nice big gust coming now, so I wonder if it'll work. Um, when the voltage inside this circuit hits 22 to 24 volts, the inverter, I keep calling it an inverter, but it's not. The voltage reducer, this box here, turns on. Okay, and that's what these heavy, this heavy 12 volt or 10 gauge wire. This white one here is the ground side. It's just, like I said, it's just temporarily hooked up because I was experimenting with it. It turned on and it turned on the relay, which disconnected the 10.8 to 30 volt inverter. This one got disconnected. So the wind turbine was able to spin up to about 40 volts and the 1000 watt inverter, which is 22 to 60 volts, was running and was inverting DC to AC. Um, now what I did notice was this little voltage reducer actually seems to work much better than the Zener circuit. It doesn't have that, uh, that sl uh, let's call it sloppy power, where it's constantly turning on and turning off the, the relay. Um, so that's one thing I did like it because it's either on or off. It's got that, I, I like to call a float circuit where it turns on and it doesn't like go click, 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 click. It'll stay on until it loses its capacitance or power stored up or whatever you want to call it. Okay. Anyway, um, it does look a little sloppy. It actually is a little bit sloppy compared to what I used to have here. Uh, but you can see this is the power going into, this is the line side of the inverter, or the voltage reducer. They're not called inverters, they're voltage reducers. This is the line in positive, here's the line in negative. Okay, this is probably, this draws only about an amp and a half. All right, so there is somewhat of a load on the wind turbine that I do lose when that is on, which is fine. When I'm generating that much wind, or the wind is generating that much power, you know, I'm up over, you know, 40, 50 volts, pu pushing 20 amps, that's fine. It can draw as much power as it needs. But it, it does supply enough amperage to fire that relay, which is what I want. And there's still actually some left over, so if I really wanted it to, I could, you know, hook it up to a... 55 watt halogen bulb or something and it would be like a little divert circuit of some sort but I don't plan to do that. Now right now what you're seeing on these meters which I know it's hard to see it's freaking cold today. Let me zoom these in here. Uh, right now the wind is actually lightened up just a tad. Uh, this is all wind. I have the solar panels all disconnected. Now what I'm going to show you here is I, I got an email about this wind turbine connected to a 12 volt battery. Um, now I don't have a deep cycle battery on hand that I can hook up to. All I have is a small uh, well it's, it's like a lawn tractor golf cart battery 12 volt battery for a gas cart or, or a lawn tractor or I can find it. There it is. That was my small load. Whoa! We've been hitting over 100 watts on the AC side all day today. It's actually dipping down lower than it was earlier because the windows are dying out a little. But yeah, this is the battery we're going to be using. The voltage in it is... Well, let's find out. Let's, let me zoom it back up here. I'm actually going to hook it up to this i got my DC uh, commercial electric meter here. Watch this, we're just going to use that to hold that side. Oh, you bastard. Come on. This thing sucks on batteries. There, that's our battery voltage. Okay. Hook that back there. Well, what I'm going to do... I'm going to unplug the inverters. 
I'm gonna disconnect that circuit completely. Now I don't have a dump load connected on either one of these inverters, so when I unplug them, it's open volts. Uh, I wish the wind wasn't as strong. I gotta get a softer braking system. I don't like shutting this turbine off. It's dead shorting it. I gotta get like a, a bunch of load resistors or something and when the brake is activated it'll push it through that instead. Uh, but we're gonna do actual DC into a DC load. So that way you can see exactly what this thing is doing. Okay, now we got a lull in the wind. Let me hook the battery up first. Okay, now I'm going to... There we go. Now I'm going to unplug the inverters. Okay, they are both disconnected. So here's... I have them both plugged in like this with this little three-way jobber here. And it goes into the kilowatt meter right there. But they're at the, they're unplugged. Okay, this video is going to be long. Holy crap! Um, okay, so this is all. There you can see now that's the battery voltage. I hope that flash I just saw was one of these shitty fluorescent bulbs flickering and not the power going out. Because that will suck. Okay. Um. All right, so you can see that there, there is about 12 and a half volts. So you can see my meters are pretty accurate. I got them calibrated. Uh, now I just gotta wait for some, <laughs> I just gotta wait for some wind now, I think. Because now I don't have any. No, I also have this. This is from wind sun, wind and solar power.com. That's my, uh, this was my charge controller. This is the charge controller that I always use. Anytime I have wind or solar hooked up to a battery of some sort. But right now it's just monitoring the voltage. See there's those two wires there that's plus or minus coming out or going into the charge controller for voltage sensing. That white plug is a temperature sensor. I have a temperature probe for this as well. And you can see there that's the relay light that tells you when the when the relay is active now i don't think this charge controller can operate that large relay i don't know i don't want to risk it i got to double check the data sheet on it because yes yeah, there we go and now it's charging but here let's go back over to the meters because if it can i'll get another one of those big ass relays and well, even if it can, I'll get another one of them big ass relays from Thermodyne Hydrogen Appliances. And I'll use an automotive relay to control it. Um, now, see, look at this. The wind completely died off. Completely died off. I opened the door. Yeah. Yeah, that's some shit. The wind completely died off as soon as I did that. Now, if I hook the solar panels up, I'll hook that up real quick just to show you. Okay, now they're hooked up. That's solar. Man, I wish I was out here before. I was pushing. 40, 45, 46 volts at 20 amps into the grid. Okay, there's uh, sun starting to bust out now. You can see. There's a charge controller. You can see the light blinking. Dude, this is only for voltage reference. This isn't hooked up yet. And I bought this little buddy box from where I got the box, but I remember I found this charge controller. It's a universal uh, relay diversion controller, basically. It just senses the battery voltage and it'll activate a relay to that's connected to uh, your battery bank and a, a dump system that you may have. There it goes. There's the sun. That is solar. 
That is one 100 watt solar panel. From Windy Nation, my, my dad. Um, God damn it. I can't believe the wind just died off like that. That sucks. Let's see, alright, that might be wind now. Let me disconnect the solar panel. Okay, that's wind. That's all wind. That's into a 12 volt battery. You can see it's pushing 16 volts, 2 amps. So the battery is near charged. Well, it does have a, it's a little dead, but let me see if I can go find a regular 12 volt battery. 